Author Showcase. I'm Dixie Jericho. And I'm Tom Cannon. Today we're with Sally Sisna. Hi. Hi. Uh, she uh, is the author of this book, Take Me Home to Woodstock, and it's Woodstock, Illinois. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, as of this taping, it's not, we're pre-launch party. Right. Uh, but it will we'll be, you'll be on your way once this comes out. Right, October 1st. October 1st. So. And uh, it'll be available through Amazon. No, it'll be. It's going to be available. Well, it might be, but <laughs> <laughs> eventually it might be. Um, but right now it'll be available through the bookstore in Woodstock, and through Ingram Spark, which puts it into a catalog where Independence and oh, Barnes nice. and Noble, Barnes and Noble, and all kinds of uh, booksellers can can get it to order. So. And I just have to convince them to order it. <laughs> <laughs> and if they want more information on where to find it exactly, they can go to your website, right? You betcha. Which is? Um, Sally Susna at Sulu, S-U-L-U, press, dot org. <laughs> so now, did you um, publish these yourself? Are you self-published, or did you go through the traditional? I'm self-published. Tell us a little bit about that process. Okay. Um, well, the... It's been a steeply learning curve <laughs> <laughs> because the when I decided to go ahead and do a publishing company to publish myself, um, I had to learn about the publishing company. I had to learn about all the ins and outs of printing and and Ingram's been good, but their um, I, I wouldn't say that their site is uh, user friendly, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a lot of of learning the basic ins and outs of all of that, like how to format and how to right what kind of paper even right. There's all and sorts of they weird ask things. all mm -hmm. kinds of questions about about things, and so I did the best I could to guess at what would be the best. So mm -hmm. this is the first book, and from that uh, series that I'm doing, and so. Uh, I figure I'm learning as I go along with this one, and the next one will be a snap. <laughs> <laughs> right. You go, girl. Mm -hmm. So what is the book about? It's about Woodstock, Illinois? Well, it's not about Woodstock, Illinois, but it's set in Woodstock. Um, I was born in Woodstock um, many years ago, uh, and my grandparents uh, and their parents, all, well, no, my mo grandmother's parents are from Racine. Mm -hmm. So and part of the story out, is in Racine as right, well. Right, yeah. So it starts out with Ida in Racine and John in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. And they start a courtship and How did in they the meet? 1900. So they met their friends. Okay. Um, well, his brother and the friend. Mm -hmm. And so they try to, um, John wants to have everything set. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to have his business set, everything set, but he's 30 years old. Oh. Ida has a business of being a seamstress, and she wants to get married and have children. And so uh, over the two-year courtship, which Ida is not two happy years. about. yeah, wow. um, Is that long for back then? or no? Um, I think it's long for back then, okay. especially when you're that age. And not yeah. that people didn't get married mm -hmm. that, that old, mm -hmm. but... But as a matter of fact, they tended to be a little bit older than what mm -hmm. we think about. And they live in different cities. And different cities so and they have to, yeah. and they, you know, the telephone, the telephone is new. Uh, oh, I wow. just never used the telephone, so that's one mm -hmm. of the things that happens uh, during that time. Um, so, you know, holding a courtship that far away yeah. from each other can, was... So did they write letters? They wrote letters. Oh, and wow. so one of the things that, that I've been able to do is gather together my family Papers, I guess mm -hmm. you would say. When when one of my elders dies, then they I get all the, the <laughs> letters and papers. You're like the family and, historian, yeah. right? And so uh, that was very helpful in in looking at the letters that they wrote. And I do include letters that they wrote and oh, letters cool. that that um, uh, they wrote to other people. Mostly, uh, you know, I embellished a little bit in some right. cases, but. Yes, basically mm -hmm. the letters that they wrote to each other. And then also um, the newspaper. I use the, the Woodstock Sentinel a lot. And just to, first of all, back in the day, the papers mm -hmm. used to say, 
where people went, like so and so went to McKen yeah. McHenry yesterday, <laughs> and things like that. So I can pretty much not trace every single day with them, but I can trace a lot of their actions of going different places, or if they go for the holiday to Racine, lots of times it's in the paper. Wow. So I could do that, and then of course that's I, a really small town. Yeah, yeah, it's a very small town, and. Then on the, but I think back then it was really normal. Yeah. To mm -hmm. to have that kind of, mm -hmm. uh, it was a little town anyway, like five hundred mm -hmm. people. So you know there wasn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyhow, the the other thing that the newspaper does is anything that's in the paper in Woodstock or Racine, I'm going to assume that they saw this. Yes. So I can use the headlines from that mm -hmm. to sort of uh, motivate the stories, I guess you could say. So I did that, and I did include um, clips from the newspaper here and there that are kind of funny or mm -hmm. that are uh, about them, uh, too. Right. And, and some that aren't, which, yeah. I've, I mean, you really try to, you do, you know, show kind of 1900, the settings of really cool time in our country, mm -hmm. an interesting time, and so I like to, the clippings for that but then I did come to realize you know kind of going well this is probably what Ida and John read so yes. like you're reading the same thing that they are reading mm. they would have read right right and the paper I make the paper um, something that at times is a story in other words they will pick up the paper and they'll read a headline and they'll start to read the the uh, article and so mm -hmm. have the article in there that they're reading and then they're reacting to it and some things like that so um, there is there's quite a bit of uh, storytelling that mm -hmm. goes along with with those other two elements and so. speaking of st storytelling so the whole book is your family history yes. but you've also made it into a story so right so yeah. it's a, it's more it's you, you created a story and a storyline and the real people but and they're real events, but they're also fictionalized, correct? Right, they're fictional. Though, you know, I don't, I, I wasn't privy, I'm not quite that old. <laughs> I wasn't privy to the conversation that they had. Mm -hmm. So, it, amazingly, if, if I could get started into a conversation, started into um, what so and so would say, kind of put myself in there, it almost wrote itself. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, as I got to know these people, they actually were. I could see, I know what they would answer. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I know what they would say. What did your family think? Did they read it? Did they? One, so far only one niece has read it, mm -hmm. and she read it out loud to her mother. Oh, so, nice. so it was, um, and, and she liked it and, it, and it was really cute. She would come back to me and say, no, did this really happen, or is this part of a made-up <laughs> story, you know? And I and I, so I'd say, well, it, this really happened, but mm -hmm. of course I don't know the, the yeah. mm -hmm. details of what how they reacted or mm -hmm. anything like that. So I tried to stick to the history of it, but and uh, and and include the history of this town and mm -hmm. the times and stuff, but yeah, the story's made up pretty much. So now you said there were going to be three of them. Well, right now I have. <laughs> I retired and I started to write, and mm -hmm. I tell you, I could, I could have just sat and written for. Well, I did sort of sit <laughs> and sit and write for a long time, and I wrote three books. Mm -hmm. right? I didn't know I was writing three books mm -hmm. at the time. I thought I was writing one mm -hmm. book, but it was three books long. So when I started to work with people and started to actually say I would like to publish this. Um, the suggestion was that I cut it in half, cut it in thirds, mm -hmm. do something to get the page numbers down. Oh, okay. So this is a slim volume. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up with about 50,000 words in, in this book. And the other two will be a little longer, but they're not, not that much longer. So I'm hoping to get one out. Um, I'm, I'm shooting for next summer, mm -hmm. and then one maybe at Christmas time. In the in 2020. Do you remember how many words did you when you thought it was going to be one book? How many words was it? <laughs> 223,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> did you have an editor that worked with you at all? Or? Yes, I did have it professionally edited, and um, I love Juliet. She just did an excellent job of of not just finding typos, which is very difficult, but mm -hmm. but editing the 
I don't know, the, the feelings that mm -hmm. were in there. You know, she'd say, this doesn't really connect. Is there a way we could connect this in some way to mm -hmm. this other thing? Or, you know, things like that, that when you're writing it and you're so invested yeah. in the story, it's hard. Oh. It's hard yeah. to see those things. So having that outside person who's really looking for that sort of thing, plus the typos, mm -hmm. um, it really, really helps. Yeah, because you don't really see the typos in your own writing. Oh gosh, times. no. Um, only after it's printed. Yeah. <laughs> then you see them. Yeah. You could circle them with a yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think this is a neat idea for people that are interested in ancestry and their family history and they don't yes. quite know what to do with it. And I could see how you writing, you got this, this is what happened to your yeah. But in real life, those events aren't going to be linear, and you have to make yeah. it linear. You're right. And you know, right. they're not connected, and they're. Or and and I see. I know the story as it goes on, so I think that helps too. Yeah. Because if if people who write series, I think, and I'm not positive about this, but I think they write a story and then they go and say, okay, now what would be the next adventure this person would have? Mm -hmm. I know what the adventures are. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. I know. Now, I can make up an adventure. Clara, mm -hmm. who's a secondary character here, she's Ida's sister, is only 18 when this book is, is when it's the time. Mm -hmm. um, she's trying to decide what she wants to be. She wants to get married. She likes boys. She's a little more of a modern girl, uh, goes to the wine clubs and things like that. And um, I don't know her story very well. Mm -hmm. I know that there was an Aunt Clara. I never met her. Mm -hmm. um, well, I never met John and Ida either. So it's all mm -hmm. it's all learning these people and learning about them and and kind of uh, finding them again. But so Clara is a sort of an open book. Yeah. So. And she doesn't have children, so I don't have to worry too much about. The, her heirs coming like, back like, and saying that didn't happen yeah, or something. Yeah. And so she's uh, kind of let my my um, uh, creative spirit mm -hmm. go with, with, with her. And so she's the person in the story that goes out in a storm in a boat or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Yes. She and takes friends out on the Lake Michigan oh my gosh. and a tornado blows up as oh, it wow. is what want to do <laughs> down by Racine. Yeah. And um, it pushes the boat way out into the lake and also the motor stops. And so they, they're stranded out there. And when, come to find out when they get back, when Ida runs down to the dock to try and find her because she hears the boats back, um, she's up there with a blowhorn telling people where to go and what to do and, <laughs> and thanking them all for helping <laughs> and you know, stuff like this. Now, that story about the boat really happened. I don't know if Clara was really on it. Yeah, oh, I'm really? Not sure. Yeah. But, and you know, and she was also, a, she wanted to write, she said, come back, she wants to write for the newspaper. Yes. And yes. but you don't know that she but you know that she wrote for an article then but yes, you don't I, know that yeah I know that she was did some writing for newspapers and that that's about it I know she was a matron in the in near the end of her life a matron at a college uh, fraternity uh, mm. girls fraternity a girls sorority rather mm -hmm. and um, so that's going to make for some nice oh um, yeah interesting yeah, stories I think yeah so. So yeah, I, I know just a little bit about her, and so that's fun to find things that she can do mm -hmm. that are a little bit wild, because Ida's very staid, and yeah. very much mom, and... and right, right, on the other hand, the, oh, yeah. so you have letters, <laughs> you know, letters for yes. actually hers, and I thought yeah. that'll be nice source material, but they, she's kind of... Uh, Feisty. Uh, feisty, yes. <laughs> she is. She's a little sassy, and uh, she gets a little angry with John for taking so long, and so some of her letters are a little uh, more <laughs> pointed. A little more pointed. A little more, <laughs> more yeah. And Proper, I like, of the time, but... Yeah, I don't know that John gets it, <laughs> <laughs> that she, what she's saying sometimes. It, it's very, uh, yeah, John tends to be... This is what happened. This is where I've gone. This is where, and so forth. And he doesn't really react that much to mm -hmm. her sassiness. So um, I'm not sure if if she. I think a lot of people could relate to that story. Yeah, you know, yeah. the two different people trying to 
communicate mm -hmm. over a distance. Right, by letter, which yeah. today, how much do we do that? You know, and, and now we, we expect them to get it in like five minutes, yep. and here they got, had to get phone. it to the train, mm. and they had to take it, the train had to take it to the wherever, and uh, the trains were really important yeah. back in that time. So. Definitely. So tell us about the second book. Well, the second book. stories from the end. Yeah, so I, I have a short story in there, uh, also based on, on John and Ida, um, from 1930. So this would be after their children are grown mm -hmm. and, or at least uh, their youngest one is not just graduated from high school at that time. Um, and it's about my mother's first husband who had tuberculosis. Mm. And so is um, in the sanitarium down in Ottawa. And it's the story of that year, that wow. year when he dies at the end of it. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's uh, in this book, which was published two years ago, yeah, two years ago. Uh, in 2017, and it was published by Hidden Timbers Books down in, in um, Milwaukee. So, did you submit it to a contest? Yeah. Or? I submitted. They had a call for for stories, and mm -hmm. I submitted. Um, and uh, so I read it this morning when I was waiting to come here before I came here, and it's pretty good. So <laughs> isn't that amazing when you go back and you're like, huh? Oh. I write this. <laughs> My sister, who's uh, 92, um, is uh, has dementia, and so I read. I take these things and I read them to her, and mm -hmm. she always at the end asks, "Did I write that? <laughs> Did I write that?" That's a sister thing. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "You you contributed to it because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. another place that I learned the stories about my family, Absolutely. from my sisters, and sister and brother." And, and so for uh, oh, and for people that are interested in writing and publishing themselves, uh, I, I think you, have, you could share your experiences with that and maybe start with uh, the cover. Okay. How did you come up with the cover and, and what is the cover? Okay, the, the cover is, is um, a picture, if I hold it like this. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. And it's a picture that we had, um, it was in my archives of Woodstock in 1904, and I know, or, or after, um, because this house right here is John's house. Oh, wow. And it's Lincoln Avenue in Woodstock, Illinois. And um, it's dirt, dirt road. Mm -hmm. um, so that was before the paving, which happened mid, mid teens, or mid century, uh, probably, I'm trying to think of when exactly, but around 07, somewhere around that. And he, the house was finished in 04. And as a matter of fact, when the house was being built, they lived in a, one, well, two doors down was his brother's house, and they lived in their stable um, while the house was being built, and that's where my mother was born. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. so, so whenever my mother was asked, you know, left the door open, and was, yeah, I was born in a barn. Were you born in a barn? <laughs> She'd say, yeah, I was. <laughs> That's a, such a cool idea because I think a lot of people, like I have old photographs and, and I have a, a picture of where my grandma lived in Italy and I'm thinking to myself, oh yeah, that's something you could actually do is make stories and then you might even find out more from other people. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, a, you know, write a story and then have a, a sister or something go, no, that really wasn't, you know, and then you can fix it a little and get a little mm -hmm. more information. I think a lot of people would like that. Um, like how you did that. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, and I did it as sort of short stories. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you'd, you'd get into a scene, and the scene would be, be, be four pages long, mm -hmm. and then that's over. And there's a sort of an ending there, hopefully a satisfying ending of that mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's a letter, or there's a oh, newspaper cool. article, or there's something else happening. So, so it's tight. Oh. Yeah. So there, there are scenes that move you through the year, and it's done by year. So there's four chapters here. Um, the first one is a Preface, no, preface, not a preface, but really, yeah, and, uh, something that will tie the three together. Oh, okay. okay. So it happens in eleven. So that it, when you're introduced to the characters, you know all the characters, because mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges of doing family things. Is there's lots of well, at least in my family, there's lots of kids and yeah. lots of characters. So this actually introduces all but one of the children and Ida and John and. Um, kind of introduces Woodstock. 
and then it goes back to 1900. Mm -hmm. And so the first chapter after that is 1900, then 1901, and 1902, and 1903. And so then the next one will be for four years, um, at least at this point. That's mm -hmm. my plan. <laughs> and then the next four years. And then I think I'm probably going to have to go more like 10 years or something in the mm -hmm. ones after that if I keep, if I'm still alive and yeah, can okay. keep going. <laughs> 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 Well, you know, that's that's something that you have to think mm -hmm. about, you know, that, that how much time do you have left? Um, if you're 60 and you start this, you've got, what, maybe 40 years that you can do this in until mm -hmm. you're, no, 30 years, 60 mm -hmm. to 9, yeah, about yeah. 30 years if you can mm -hmm. keep your senses and so mm -hmm. forth. It takes a long time to write and then edit. How long did this one take from the time you wrote it to the time you published? Well, I retired about three years ago, and I really didn't start writing until, I've been wanting to write forever, mm -hmm. but I didn't start writing until the, I actually was out the door of, of education. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I taught one semester after I retired from, from Milwaukee School of Engineering, and then I taught one semester at MATC, and I didn't write during that semester. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I found it impossible yeah. to, to do. Mm -hmm. So I actually, um, I would say it took three years and a half or so, mm -hmm. well, this year, so, yeah. so, so three and a half years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd say that I was all done with the writing last November. So, mm -hmm. so it's taken from this last year mm -hmm. has been Editing, polishing, learning about publishing, and so forth. And deciding, because you, you made the decision to self-publish. You're like, I could send it to other places, and you decided you were going to self-publish. Well, that goes back to the age thing. You know, if I'm going to send it to, let's say, and I don't know what the average is, but I looked at mm -hmm. the statistics, I'm going to send it to 30 places. Well, first of all, they, want, they would like you to get an agent, or mm -hmm. that's the best yep. thing to do. So you send it to a bunch of agents, maybe one of them thinks, oh, this is kind of a, a cute little story and I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, then they go out and sell it to publishing companies and mm -hmm. hopefully one of them will. Or you go right to the publishing companies and you get lots of rejection mm -hmm. um, before you find, now it's very possible, and I suppose mm -hmm. I could have tried one, <laughs> that you send it to one place, they love it, they publish it. I mean, that is a possibility, mm -hmm. but that's not the I think that's, you know, norm. And even rare. still, you're, you're waiting, you know, okay, we're, we're going to, we accept it, okay, then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then... Yeah. Then well, plus, with it being a personal story, I don't know if I would want people messing and telling me, oh, this doesn't work yeah. for us, you know, yeah, this right. part, change this, because it's personal, and you want it a certain way. Right. It's almost a legacy. Yes, I thank you. That's that's really good. Um, anyhow, so I'm figuring. Okay, so so let's say think it maybe five years. Okay, mm -hmm. that it would take, and I could be writing other stuff. You know, I could be writing mm -hmm. the next chapters or whatever. But it might never happen too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not not a spring chicken. You yeah, know, it to, takes a lot of energy to yeah. write and then publish and and then promote after that. Right. They always want you to have a platform and promote and. Yeah. And I have to do that one way or the other. Right. right. So you might as well just do it for yourself. And so what are, is your marketing plan? <laughs> 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 well, I'm having a launch. Yeah. <laughs> right now we're right in the middle of planning that and, and uh, we're doing Ooh, some sweet. little extra. Um, do you have help with it or just your group? My, I don't know. I would guess my right. group. Family, <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Friends, I didn't family. know if you hired somebody or if it's just a writing group. Um, Juliet's doing a little bit of, of stuff for me for publicity, uh, mostly uh, advice. Mm -hmm. um, so for publicity and, and so forth, like... Plus when you're a published really author, you can use the royal we, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so... I decided I wanted to do, to launch it in Woodstock. So first, I contacted I contacted the bookstore, the independent bookstore down there. They were thrilled. Oh, good. So um, now starting to write press releases, which is probably harder, skill. Uh, yep. very much harder than writing 
the uh, book. Yes. <laughs> so, so I'm doing that, and um, so I'm going to send it to the little towns around Woodstock mm -hmm. and to the papers in Woodstock. Uh, and then I'd like to get something around Racine, same kind of thing, maybe mm -hmm. not, we wouldn't call it a launch, but a reading, yeah. um, around Racine, and uh, maybe here in Oshkosh, mm -hmm. in Oshkosh, because yeah, I, I live here. We have that right. small town vibe here, too. Yeah, so I think... And lots of interest in ancestry oh, yeah. and researching and stuff. Absolutely, and, so I think and I got friends here, so... Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, those would be my for my main places right now that I'm going to put effort into. Woodstock has a very uh, healthy, uh, I don't know what we call it, uh, commercialism of their their mall. Mm -hmm. It's where Groundhog Days was, was yep. filmed, so they have a great big Groundhog Days um, celebration. They have something called uh, Victorian Christmas. This is more Edwardian, but mm -hmm. you want to just put the yeah. hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Victorian Christmas, which is uh, on the square with lights in the, mm -hmm. in the park and and chariot ride, or horse and carriage rides yeah. and all this kind of thing, and people dressed and walk around singing and you know it's nice. it's a wonderful wonderful uh, celebration. So I think I'll go down for that. I'm mm -hmm. having decided if I'm going to dress up like a like an Ida or not, mm -hmm. and um, probably just hand out. Um, things at that mm -hmm. uh, to for them oh. to go to the bookstore yeah and and so i'll probably do that a couple times um at the launch we're doing a couple of interesting things one of the one the first chapter is called the pouring and it's about lead pouring which is a christmas tradition in germany where you take and you you put a chunk of lead in a spoon and you put it over a candle and melt it and then you pour it into water and it course hardens and then you take it out and it's a shape of some sort and then you decide what the shape is oh that looks like a dragon and then you go to this long list of, of things and you find dragon on there and it and it's a what it forecasting means. that's cool of, you, of mm -hmm. your your next year so for that we're not going to let pour but I mean I would love to but it's yeah. kind of toxic yeah kind of toxic <laughs> and probably <laughs> against the EPA and yeah. whatever so <laughs> So Even what I'm wax pour or something. Yeah, well, yeah, and they, they, I did look up wax pouring, but what I decided to do was I'm going to hand out cards to people that come mm -hmm. in, and also there's a farmers market going on mm -hmm. for it, so I'll go out and somebody will. I'm not going to do it, but somebody will go out and and uh, hand out cards, and if they bring that in, it's going to have a symbol on it, and that symbol can be matched to the symbol on the oh, list. That's kind of cool. And it'll be in German and then in, in English. So mm -hmm. hopefully that'll be a fun thing for even kids to do okay. to have have a fortune like that. Um, and then the other thing is um, Ida, a seamstress, in the story is is making a dress for um, the heir of the Horlick family. And the Horlick family, or the, the main guy, I think his name is William Horlick, invented malted milk. Oh wow. Okay, so I have her making the debutante dress for the daughter of, of uh, William Horlick. And so the store, the, the uh, store in, in Woodstock, the, the book seller mm -hmm. store, has a little ice cream bar and candy shop oh, cool. and stuff next to it, right? You can it, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm having mm -hmm. them be able to take a ticket up and get two malted milk balls. There's six different kinds of malted mm -hmm. milk balls, so I'll be able to get um, two of them in a little cup three. Nice. Yeah. So instead of having to drag in punch and <laughs> yeah, or worry about liquor laws or anything like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so that those kinds of things so I think are are just fun. I mean, right. I, just I really so, yeah. like to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, one time I thought I wanted to be a plant party planner, so you know this is like right in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> and people go to uh, book launches and, and book talks and stuff, and they might kind of blend together. But I think they, the things like that will help them really remember yeah. that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to take some a few artifacts down too, just pictures and some other things. That, yeah, I think people would like that yeah, too. Yeah, that they can see. There has to still be some German fest in Wisconsin, Absolutely. isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And because then, yeah. Anybody that has 
grandparent or great grandparent that uh, is German and speaks German, they'll identify with the mothers in the story, correct? <laughs> yeah, two mothers in the story uh, speak German. And one of them, Louisa and, and Racine, Ida's mother, pretty much doesn't speak English, mm -hmm. although she probably can speak more than she <laughs> puts on, but she speaks German. So that was a real challenge in here. And, and then uh, Sophia in, in Woodstock speaks very broken English. Mm -hmm. So trying to write oh, something yeah. in German that then somehow the reader knows what this yeah. person said and mm -hmm. without having the translation sure. awkwardly behind it or something. So that was kind of a challenge of, of writing this. And I think you, I pulled it off of yeah, you, oh know, yes, that I, you, yeah. could, you know what they're saying even mm -hmm. though it's in German. And Enough repetition and a repeating so you know but not overboard, even right. just the right amount. I suppose mm -hmm. if you you can read German, you're going to read the German, mm -hmm. and then you'll read the English, and you'll say, why is she repeating herself? But that's, mm -hmm. that is... A lot of it's in context as yeah. well. Yeah, which is real familiar around here. I, I know my grandma yeah. doesn't speak English. She's, well, she spoke Italian, but you know what I mm -hmm. We all have that common experience. Yeah, right. And they probably wanted them to get married, like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, certainly the, the mores of... of uh, 1900 were are different than today. Mm -hmm. uh, everything on the outside had to be perfect and formal, mm -hmm. and uh, you know you didn't yeah. swear. And it, well, I mean, and people swore. I'm not saying that people didn't swear back then, but the people that John and Ida were around um, are very church going, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. language is important, especially if it's got the God word in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you do not call on God unless you're wanting to talk to God, mm -hmm. right? So so that's one of the things that one of his brothers is a has a little bit of a, well, it's not a potty mouth, but just a, he'll say, oh my God, or something like this. And yeah. John will say, language, because, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. They did, you don't do that, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's yeah, that, that's, uh, that time period, you might have said things behind the scene or mm -hmm. did things behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Mm -hmm. But you didn't let the world know about mm -hmm. these things, and so there's some of that, some scandal that I dug up. That oh, cool. It's in there too. That that it's not scandalous because it never came out, so it's not scandalous, yeah. right? Until <laughs> <laughs> now, now it is, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You ruined the family name. 120 <laughs> na 20 years later, I ruined the name. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. So that's that's. Uh, uh, it's a lot packed into that little book when we start to talk about it that yeah. way, but yeah. Um, and um, so John and I did do get together sort of on the, um, on the secret a little bit. Oh, so. okay. So, <laughs> so that's, that's uh, part of the story. Um, does that answer, I don't remember what yeah. the question was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, what advice would you give somebody who's trying to do writing and trying to do something similar? And well, if you're trying to do writing, my biggest advice would be write. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sit down and write, <laughs> and don't edit your own stuff right away. Just write. You're gonna throw half of it away anyway. So it just you know, and, and you're gonna read it in two weeks, and you're gonna say, well, "What was I thinking?" But you need that. I don't know the discipline of of putting words on paper, and um, for, for whatever reason, I have no problem with that. I've not had writer's block. Um, I can sit down and write. And if I can't sit down and come up with a scene to write and write it, there's so much else you can be doing as you prepare for this. So mm -hmm. I think if you can get your story, sit down and write, write every day, mm -hmm. even if it's for 15 minutes. Um, it's good advice. It's, it's, I think that's the number one thing. For self-publishing, I think there's real good reasons to do it. Um, I think there's also really good reasons not to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's almost like it's a decision, it's a very hard decision, but it's a decision you have to make, what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know anything about computers, self-publishing is going to be a real impossibility almost unless you, you have find a higher people <laughs> yeah. and then if, but yeah. so there's so many options out there and I think you considered some of them you know like uh, where it's just like like Lulu where you just 
publish it, and you decided to go with Bantam. Uh, Ingram. Ingram, rather. Where did I get that from? I don't <laughs> so, know. <laughs> Maybe Grant Bantam's part of Ingram. I thought, yeah. <laughs> and so why did you decide to go with them? And partly it has to do with the ISBN numbers and stuff as well. Well, Ingram will send your book to any bookseller as long as you meet certain requirements. And there are requirements that maybe we don't like to think about, like what is the wholesale discount mm -hmm. going to be when somebody wants to buy mm -hmm. your book? Uh, or will you take returns? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you have three choices. You can not take returns. You can take return, we sort of take returns in that they, they destroy the extra books. Mm -hmm. Or you can have them sent back to you, and I chose to have them sent back to me. Um, if nothing else, everybody in my family will have two or three of these, so you know it works mm -hmm. out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they'll make well with they'll make well with the Christmas gifts. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, and then the discount is is deep uh, mm -hmm. that you have to give. But if you give the disc the ma max discount, mm -hmm. and you have the books. Um, Returnable, mm -hmm. then they will send. Then and everybody will accept it. Really? Yeah. At least that's what what they told me. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do for the um, ebook. I'm still in the process of thinking about that. Yeah, you could go for audiobooks or something. Right. Um, they have packages. Okay. Okay. So so yeah, but. I had thought about doing Kindle, yeah. and so I, I don't know for sure. Ingram Sparks does have a Spark, does have mm -hmm. a ebook uh, option. Mm -hmm. So I'm still exploring that. Yes. I love to go into a bookstore and browse the sure. books and buy books and know that I'm supporting them and yes. that's yeah. just something that personally I enjoy very much. And I have to say that I am also on Amazon. Um, I have four books published but they're through a publisher and it's kind of out of my hands where they promote that. And they are like very low price because part of it is their novellas and part of it is their romance and Christian romance and so People cycle through those kind of short novels very quickly, mm -hmm. and it you know it works for them. But I do, and we're I do not like what you're saying. Discount too. those people because what it's they it's lower price. Yeah. But they make it up in value. Yeah. They buy a lot of books from a lot of. Well, and that's what somebody they're willing to try a, a right. book for yeah. a buck or a book for three bucks. Yeah, I was I was reading something about someone who took a book and and put it down to I think it was ninety nine cents, mm -hmm. and they sold something like. A thousand books in two days or something and oh, they were yes. really thrilled you know that that, yeah. that many books got out there their name got out mm -hmm. there so it, in that way you're thinking of it as sort of like advertising yeah right because exactly. people want to if they like your book they want to buy the next one by you and the next right one. so they're mm -hmm. looking for books by the author that they can trust right so then the next time they can charge a little bit more and yeah, right. it's like the giveaway theory. Well, Give I'm sort of thinking, I don't know how much they do this anymore um, in a box, but once these three little volumes are maybe the third one, when mm -hmm. I'm going to do that one, I'll do what's called a box set. Yeah, they still do that. And they, mm -hmm. it, either they publish it in one volume, and the three stories are in the oh, one okay. volume, or I'd like to have it in a box. Yeah, that would be yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. so, um, All right, well, thank you for coming in today, Sally, and talking to us. I uh, wanted to point out that if you didn't hear the whole show, if you'd like to rehear it, we are on YouTube, Author Showcase uh, of Oshkosh. And uh, if you'd like to connect with me, you can go on Facebook, The Tower of Apathy. Uh, how about you, Dixie? Uh, I have an author Facebook page, Dixie Jo Jarko. And Sally? They want to contact you, talk to you, book well, you. Well, you can come to to Facebook, and I have uh, author Sally Susan on Facebook, yes. and um, also you can contact me on my email of Sally Cisna, all small letters, and all in no spaces uh, at suepress.com. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you'd like to be on Author Showcase, please contact us on our Facebook page or at Oshkosh Author Showcase at gmail.com. Otherwise, continue the conversation with Dixie and Tom via social media. Look for Dixie by searching for Daisy Jericho, and please check out her books, The Love Thief and Sparks Fly on Amazon. You can find Tom Cannon on many types of social media, and please check out his book, 
on Amazon. It's all of apathy. Our goal is to introduce local authors around Oshkosh and hear their stories. We want to thank the Oshkosh Public Library and the Friends of Oshkosh Public Library for supporting the creation of the show. If you are a writer and are looking for community, we suggest the Oshkosh Area Writers Club and the Lakefly Writers Conference held each May. 